when our when our team presented those numbers to me, said, do you realize that there's been over 3,000 new customers, first time submitters that have not ever submitted a card to us that have sub are, are submitting now? That's a crazy number. <laughs> Welcome to Breaker Culture Weekly. The guys from BreakerCulture.com help pull back the curtains and give you insight into the hobby. Sit back and enjoy interviews, product breakdowns, and hobby analysis so you can get your edge in the marketplace. And now, to the show. What is going on, folks? Ty from Breaker Culture, proud members of the Bench Clear Media Network. Uh, go to benchclear.us or youtube.com forward slash benchclear. All the links are in the show notes. It's been some great content from the from the dudes over at Bench Clear this week. If you didn't see Mike, the baseball collector, his video that showed his best card from 51, 1951 all the way to uh, 2019, awesome, awesome video. I was... I was captivated for all 28 minutes. It was uh, it's, it's hard to keep my attention for 28 minutes. So uh, props to Mike. That was a really cool video. Mike's always putting out some great content, so be sure to check out his videos. And then, of course, Jeff from Pat Geek, his weekly episodes popping out Wednesday. Just had one a couple days ago uh, around 18 Bowman baseball. It's always fun to see Jeff opening up baseball cards. He is a basketball guy, and he is doing his best to understand more about the baseball card world and uh, Jeff's stuff is just super fun. But our newest channel members, Mike and Luke from Up North Collectors, welcome to the team. It is awesome to have them uh, putting out content on the Bench Clear channel. So uh, go check out there. They do a lot of box rips and some investment oriented, um, you know, videos how to how to approach certain things. It's two incredibly cool dudes. So go check out what they're doing. Um, Look, today's episode, episode 94, we are we are back in the saddle with Jeremy Murray, Vice President of Beckett Grading. And look, we, we've had him on, this is our third time in 94 episodes, so about every 25 or so episodes we've had him on. And uh, he's great to talk to. And I, I felt like it was really important to kind of retouch base with him, just with everything that's happened um, obviously there's a lot to chatter about the backlog, you know, PSA announced the price increases for both BGS and PSA, the kind of the rise of SGC. And so we talk about all that today. We talk about how, really how COVID-19, uh, you know, actually impacted their business. You know, what, how did they respond? What do they do for, um, you know, the processes, how have they approached it kind of going forward with, you know, ensuring the integrity of their grades and, all of that stuff. We talk a little bit about the rise of SGC. What are his thoughts on that? And so um, this is a very open conversation. I, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And I think uh, if anything, right, you'll have additional questions that we can go back and talk to to Jeremy about next time he's on. So uh, if you are going to be submitting something to Beckett uh, this month, use code BCJULY. So that's BC uh, Breaker Culture or Bench Clear July. And each one of the bench clear submissions will be entered into a uh, drawing for a hundred dollar Beckett credit. Um, so it'll be a smaller pool, but if you're into, if you're submitting cards anyway, go ahead and put that code in, and and uh, you'll probably have a pretty good chance of of having a uh, having a hundred dollar gift card um, awarded to you. So enjoy that. No oh, shoot, was July 9th right now. You got six days, six days to get your taxes done. Don't forget that. It hit me couple days ago that I hadn't done my taxes and those are due July 15th. Always looking out for you guys. So be sure to get that done. All right. Before we jump into the interview, I just want to remind you to go check out starstock.com. It's a sponsor for our show, but it more importantly, it's, it's a platform that Jeff and I have been using. Um, I've been constantly on that site, kind of interacting with my own collection, selling, buying, um, there's been some great buys, right? A lot of the, uh, older rookie stuff is starting to pop on there, like 18, 19 select basketball. Some of the uh, 17, 18, 19 baseball rookies are starting to pop on there and you can get some really good deals on cards still. It, it's also great because there's a lot of new buyers and sellers entering the market. And so you can, you can pop on to, to star stock and know that you probably have a good chance at, at selling your stuff at very fair, if not better prices than what you're finding in the eBay, in Com C world. And uh, I found that to be true with some of the stuff I've been selling 
um, and, and my graded basketball cards that I have on there. So go check them out, starstock.com. If you didn't listen to the interview last week, so episode 93 I did with Scott, we had a good conversation there too, but uh, highly recommend starstock.com. All right, enjoy the conversation with Jeremy and have yourself a great week. Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm good. Tell her how are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on the show today. Excited to have you. Absolutely, a, a little uh, pre Fourth of July discussion. I know, right? I was looking back. You were on episode 43 in May of last year, 76 in October. So That's I, crazy. I, we're uh, 90. This will be 95. So you know, that'd be 20 or 30. You're popping on. <laughs> That, that's awesome. I, I, I woke up this morning and I was thinking, I was like, how long ago was it that we talked? And it doesn't seem that long ago, but it's October. Like the time is just flying. It's it's July and this crazy 2020 already. And the, it's, it's, it's the year is moving along. And maybe a good thing that this year is moving along quickly. Oh, man, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the, yeah, the one year you want time to move fast. Yeah, right? go fast. Come on, 2020. <laughs> get out of here. Well, it's funny because I remember back in October. So that's what, nine months ago? more or less. I mean, you and I were talking about how, man, this market marketplace is getting crazy. You know, you're yep. seeing an influx. We're seeing prices go, you know, haywire. Wow. I mean, Surprise. nothing compared to what's happened in the last nine yep. months. Su- Surprise. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you October. And here it is 2020, <laughs> middle of a pandemic. And um, the market has gotten increasingly stronger than what it, what it was. Yeah. Unbelievable. Who would have thunk? that the hobby is kind of a reprieve for people, like just to escape, right? It's, it's, it, people are escaping yeah. the frustrations and the, the tense situations and, and running to sports cards in, in some yep. scenarios. It, and you mix it in, there, there's there's no leagues going. I mean, the the, uh, the the PGA tournament is the only thing really going on right now. And so there's no leagues. It's getting about to 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 get started again, or they hope to, and, and the market is still doing what it is. But I, there's, I think there's a lot, lot to do with it, and I think getting away from from reality and and getting back to childhood and um, it sort of brought some people out that have not not been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll dig into that in a second because I'm curious to get cool. your thoughts on that. So, so tell me how, how many how many new sports or maybe um, new shows, what, new things that you've dove into over the last three months have surprised you? Have you watched more PGA Tour, Korean baseball? Anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. As, as we joked when we set this up, I cannot wait to come on here and talk about the PGA Tour, the, the three tournaments and what's going on. And But, I mean, it, what's what's going on is is there's really nothing. It's just anticipation of, of what's going to happen. Yeah. And um, I think for, for a while there, when, when production for sports cards were shut down, people were just anticipating what's coming, what's coming, what's going to be the next – next big set that comes out and what rolls out. And I, and I think that's just sort of what's been going on. So since October, I mean, what's been going on, it's, it's just kind of the craziness around the world. I think cause everybody's kind of watching. Yeah. Have you, uh, have you tried to turn off the news for certain days in the house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we I talk about it. And I talk about it with my wife is especially at night when you're trying to sort of calm down and whatnot, you don't want to, to read social media and, and oh jump God. on, um, websites and read what's going on and because uh, you will you'll have a rough sleep or wake up all anxious and ideas how to save the world and whatnot and it's a it's a t- it's a tough place to be it is it's funny you mentioned that i have a good buddy of mine who um is in social media and sports casting and he was telling me he took a two-week vacation with his family and he committed to his family that he would not look at any social media for two weeks oh, he was halfway through it when wow. i spoke to him earlier this week and he said it's the most freeing relaxed yep. he's been that he can remember and then i'm like eh, that's yep. probably a good it, lesson it, it it's when the, when those people do their say hey, i'm taking a break for a month or um it, from social media and they come back it's like that was amazing that was yeah. amazing and you think why don't i do that why don't i just <laughs> hit the just hit that old x button on the on your iphone and, and just get rid of that app, app altogether but and then you would be missing on all the amazing doctors and political scholars that we have around the world um, that, that can't figure it out. They can't figure it out. Yes. <laughs> but that, but they're not trained as doctors or, or in the political world, but they're, they're a, 
fantastic um, and a person in the baseball card, card industry that knows how to cure everything. So we'll see. That's right. Have you started running your own studies, your pharmaceutical studies? Are you? Absolutely. I have not started yet. I have okay. not had time to do that, but I'll, I'll see if I can fit that into the schedule. There you go. <laughs> nice. That's all I need to get involved with. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so what are you most excited about with, uh, with NBA starting at the end of July and major league baseball starting July 23rd, I think is the official date. What are you more excited about the two? I'm a basketball guy. Uh, that's, that was, that's my passion. That's my love. That's my sport that I've played growing up. Um, and that's the first stuff that I started collecting back in the eighties was basketball. So I'm excited about that. I'll, I'll tell you right now, I would be surprised if, that league or any league goes the way that anyone kind of plans it to. Um, the NBA being in a bubble, I think is, is going to be interesting and tough. I, I listened to somebody the other day on sports talk radio saying, um, I think it was a Damian Lillard said, we, we have guys that, um, can't follow the rules when we have a hundred percent freedom. Just imagine what we have when we are confined in a bubble with rules, how it's going to go. So, um, I think that'll be interesting is, is how that goes down in the Orlando area. Um, but yeah, bas- basketball's were what I'm most excited about. Um, I- I've talked to guys that are, that are hardcore loyalist baseball, true and true guys. And, mm-hmm. and I think they're kind of turned off for baseball right now, just the way that the really? bickering with the owners and the, and the players union and stuff were going. So it'll be, I think they've got more of an uphill battle to fight to get the fans back than what, what the NBA does. I think NBA, the people are, are really anxious about that. And it rolls into the sport, the sports card community, um, Zion and Luca and Jean Morant and stuff like that. Like that's, those are huge pieces right now. And I think people are ready to see those guys play again. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. I do think it'll be interesting to watch, right? Having that, that additional week before any other sports are going for major league baseball and even spring training, right? I mean, oh. we're going to be able to see pretty quickly how fast people forget about the bickering. And, and I think yeah. if, if there's any year they get a pass, it's probably this year. Right. I yeah. Mean, so I, <laughs> people, people, people want to, to get back to quote unquote normal and they, they want some, some entertainment in their lives and, and not CNN or Fox news or something like that. But they want to see these guys get out there and, and play again. And it would be great for everybody if, if the, they, they get through the season and then they, they crown a champion and there's, there's a little bit of um, break between normal life. So um, I'm hoping for good things. I, I just would be stunned the way it is now that if something haywire isn't thrown in there to, to throw something off. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, right? Cause you think about that in the sports car world. I mean, what, what is, what's going to happen to prices? I mean, because it's so volatile with guys right now yeah. and there's no stats. Yeah. Like you just mentioned, there's no stats to back these yeah. guys up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens right when a guy gets someone gets COVID nineteen, or they has to they have to quarantine a guy for two or three weeks. Yeah. Like, what happens to his prices? Like, how does the market respond well, to that? I, I, I don't even know how how you would even answer that right now because there's no sports going on right now. Right, there hasn't been sports true. in months, and carts are just launching up. So right. it really makes no sense. So should there should Zion Williams' cards go down if he gets COVID, or they don't make the the NBA the playoffs, final yeah. or the yeah. the playoffs? Yeah. I, 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 right now, I'd probably say no. It may go up. It may triple because of it. Maybe he get. They say, "Oh, this is going to be great. He's going to get a year and a half break, and he's going to be well rested next year, so his stuff should be higher." I, I don't know. I can't. I have no idea how to understand this market right now. Well, I got a good chuckle yesterday because um, you know the picture of him came out of him in the gym, and he shed twenty pounds and put twenty pounds of fat apparently and put ten pounds of muscle on. He's got you know his, his mask on working Jeez. out, and. And I'm laughing because it's like, guys, you've already priced in the fact that he is going to be the next LeBron James. So I don't know what else you got. What do you you want the guy to do? (laughs) He better do that. Yes, he he, he better do that. He better be in shape. Um, He's already he's huge anyway. Like he's just his upper body is just massive anyway. So. I haven't seen that picture. I need to check that out. That'd be that'd be pretty interesting. You should. He he looks ridiculous. <laughs> he, I mean, he just he looks incredibly strong. I can't wait to see him in a, in a jersey. But it's been fun. He he seems like like he. I look at him and his legs just don't match his upper body. <laughs> so I'm interested to see how, how he's one of those guys that goes to the gym and just does upper body workouts constantly. He's just ripped and he has little stick legs. So maybe that's adds a little weight on those legs. 
We need to we need to get a, a meme going with uh, yeah. you know, forget leg day, you know, type yes. thing. <laughs> yes. With Zion in it. Yeah, but I I think I think people are just they're ready to see they're ready to see this guy explode and people are vesting into his stuff and this national treasure stuff that's going around and the prices for that stuff. It's just it's just insane. Just insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, so, so what do you, how do you see in that kind of reciprocate over to the grading world? I mean, obviously I feel like during the, the three month period of, you know, more or less no releases, right. There was a couple of releases that slipped through, yeah. but I mean, everyone was gathering their cards and sending them in, in, in mass to the yeah. grading companies. Were you seeing, I mean, was it just mind blowing seeing yeah. the volume? Okay. It was, it was, um, so for, for us, we, uh, around March 23rd, we got the ordinance that the all Dallas non-essential business had to shut down. So we pulled 90% of our staff back. We had our logistics team there, a couple of operations people there just to make sure everything was safe and okay. Graders were, were working on, on random times, but for two weeks there, cards really slowed down. Mm. And then all hell broke loose and stuff just started pouring in. It was like, um, it, it was something like I'd never seen. And we were like, okay, this is interesting. We're getting two times as many packages. And then wow. next week, three times, four times. And then you're just like, okay, this is insane. And we started getting more people back and back. And you're at seven, eight, nine, ten times more packages. You're getting more packages in one day than you were usually before COVID in a week. And, like, and at first, you're like, this is great. Yeah, this is awesome. Business is amazing. And then it just kept pouring in and pouring in. Um, and we're trying to get our staff back, trying to get our staff up and rolling back in there and like you said there was there were products coming out but um the, the cards were, were just pouring in just absolutely pouring in so it was something that at first it was exciting and like this is great and then it got a little bit well, okay how are we going to get through this stuff how are we going to catch up um and then it, it, it is kind of where it is now and i don't think it's just for us i mean yeah. psa's come out and openly talked about how they are the backlog and how they're changing things and hiring more people and things like that. And I even think uh, SGC it has has picked up picked up their submissions too because people are just they need their stuff ready, they need it back, they want it done, um, and hit while this market's hot. So um, I think I think it's across the board that it's mm. like that. But for us specifically, um, I, it, it slowed down two weeks and then floodgates opened and they they've they've remained open really okay i was just gonna ask yeah. that question so you're seeing the the volume sting as high as it was just yeah nonstop. yeah it no it, i mean it, it, if not going higher um uh, there <laughs> we've got we've got we've got crews in there and then our logistics team and and things that they're receiving and opening packages that are seven days a week just because if you don't uh, that that Monday, and especially uh, after a holiday, you're going to be so swarmed with packages that you can't process it. And it's not just the grading part of it. It is it's getting the stuff received, open, entered, invoiced, so people know, hey, I've got your stuff, everything's good. Um, that's the part that that um, is tough right now. So it's not even it's not even the grading anymore. When we talked back in October, the grading backlog was the major thing that yeah. was the issue. And what was nice about that is when, when COVID hit and it slowed down for a couple of weeks, perfect. We got to slow down a little bit and we got to t chip away at this backlog. Stuff that was mm -hmm. been there a year, we got to get that caught up and get that stuff done. We're like, this is really nice. This is great. People are going to really like that their their stuff is caught up and it's coming back to them. Um, and then now it's just exploded again. And so we had that, that break helped us um, kind of get caught up. Um, but now we are we are kind of... Um, swarmed under by, by cards and submissions and things. No kidding. So when that happens, what, what is your, what's your initial kind of knee jerk reaction? Do you look to optimize process? Do you look to hire somebody as quick as you can? Do you, yeah. what, what, what is the, what is your response to that? I'm curious. Uh, first response, I'll be honest, is, is a tad bit, you, you're, you're sort of stunned and in, in a sort of a panic mode and think, okay, what, what do I do here? What's the first thing I do here? Yeah. And we started um, in this, um, we weren't weren't letting people go. We weren't saying, "Hey, where the business is down." We said, "Okay, um, if 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 you've worked with us in the past mm -hmm. and you are been furloughed or you need a position, we will we'll take you. Come on back now for a <laughs> part time." And so during this, um, it was one of the it, one of the misconceptions. And I talked to a customer the other day to him. I was like, "We we we didn't stop hiring people or bringing people in. We were bringing people back in during a time when." People were furloughing people yeah. and we needed, we needed workers there to get these orders processed, invoiced, um, cards identified. 
not specifically the graders right now, um, but but to get get stuff processed, and that's what we did. It, it's 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 continued to be a hiring process throughout this, um, especially after the that that two week sort of uh, layoff. But that's the next thing is what do, what do we do next month? What do we do um, by the end of the year? And and a lot of this um, is the shows. Like we we've mm-hmm. we pretty much said now. We're not going to do shows. There's really no reason to. Yeah. Not not just for the the safety of of taking our staff on an airplane, flying them somewhere, coming back with what with if with the disease with right. with whatever, bringing that back in the office. But the business now is just coming in here enough, so we don't want to pull people away from the office. So mm-hmm. it 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 was one of those things that you think, okay, we're going to scale back just a tad bit, not staff wise, but just our normal procedures. Um, and let's kind of stay in house. Let's focus on this right now. And and I think kind of everybody else in the industry has kind of followed suit with that. There's there's been little to no shows. There was one here in Dallas, a, a, a very decent show, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And and guys flew in from that from all over the country. And guys that that do a lot of business with them said, "Are you guys not going to set up at this show?" We said, "No, we're not. We're going to stay right here in house. Um, we're going to work on orders all weekend so we can get this stuff caught up." Um, so that's that's kind of been our been our been our stance with this. But it, it is ramp up operations as much possible possible. Um, don't slow down because you, you just can't really afford to right now. Man, no kidding. Yeah. So so a couple questions on that. So that, you know, obviously you, you just mentioned it. PSA um, came out and said, you know, we we had a million cards in backlog. Yeah. And we you know we <laughs> we're increasing prices and we're hiring more people. You know, their stocks up from twenty to thirty five. Yeah. Yep. What um, do, do you guys kind of you guys obviously you're seeing the same thing in, in terms of just volume increases, but um, yeah. do you see price increases coming to kind of help deal with this or no? Well, yeah, we we did we 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 do and, and we we raised prices a little bit. Okay. What was happening here? Pull back the curtain a little bit on this is we would get, be getting just say I'm just throwing a number out there 400 orders coming a day. Yep. Well, 60 to 75 percent of those orders were two and five day orders. And so oh just, yeah, it was, it was like, we're sitting there and, and our, our logistics guys gives a r- report every day and says, okay, we got 400 orders and, um, 290 are, are two and five day. And you're just like, this is insane. Thanks, Zion. Like, th- yeah, it, it, it is, but, but it, it's, but you mix in other stuff. This is kind of when, when, when tops finally got their product out there. And so you've got, um, your, your Bobby Witt juniors and stuff like that, that are pouring in as well. So you, you don't even mix in just basketball at that point, which was the leader at that, at that point. Um, but then the baseball rolls in there and then football, the draft happens and Panini is able to put their draft product out there. Here it comes again. Um, Leaf was able to get some product out there before this all started. So it started mm-hmm. pouring in. So that was the thing that, that we were seeing a massive, massive increase in two and five day. And so we raised rates uh, across the board to, to say, not really to slow it down, but just to say, hey, we're, we're, we're hiring more people. We're bringing more, more in that we, we're, it's going to make sense. And it didn't slow down. Like it, it, it's one of those things that we had dealers reach out to us and say, I'll be honest with you, unless you put your, your two-day price in at $100 a card, it's not going to slow down. And it, it didn't. Um, we have we – do, we do, um, our building is not fully open we, before Monday through Friday from uh, 9 to 5. Mm-hmm. Um, our office was open for drop off and pickups. And so we stopped that. But what we've done is on Wednesday and Friday from noon, from 10 into noon, we allow drop offs and, and the line starts forming about nine and it wraps around the building of people. I'll just say that they are socially distances. We, we put the, the signs out. So everyone is safely. Wasn't gonna apart question from me. Me, yes. Worry. Yes. I just put it out there just in case we get questioned, but it's out there and, and it's lined up and it is a, a madhouse from, for, for those two hours and our guys that work the front there, they said, this is, it feels like a national feel every uh, Wednesday and Friday with the people that are just, we're just pouring in to get stuff done. And, and the guys that have, we've had guys fly in from all over the country and drop stuff off. And they happen to hit on a Wednesday and Friday. And they, they're looking at this line. They said, this is, this is insane. This is crazy what you're going through. And I say, imagine what's out here right now. It's three or four times that inside here just the amount of stuff that that's coming in it's 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 just one of those things that you're you're so thankful for and blessed for that that your business is is thriving and doing well but then just daunting to say how in the world are we going to 
keep up and get the, the stuff back to their customers. It, it, it really goes back to what we, we kind of talked about last year is how do we stay caught up to get stuff there? Because I don't want people's cards here in our in our building. It does me no good to have them sitting in our vault just staring at us. We want to get them back and, and get them processed. And that, that's the that's the tough part. No kidding. Well, I, I do. We do a good job on the Discord kind of monitoring turnaround times. I noticed even this morning, right, your, your two and five days are still on time. So you're, you're crushing on. those. 10 days is interesting to me where you're at four to six weeks for 10 days. So does that, yeah. does that mean you're seeing an influx of 10 days or you're seeing that because there's so many in two and five days, like the one that takes the, the hit yeah. is going to be a 10 day. Your answer is yes on both of those. <laughs> so uh, it is, it's, it's one of those things that, that we, to, for a daily basis, you're, you're pretty much working on two and five day and you're trying to stay caught up with, with mixing a couple. Cause our guys can only do a certain amount of stuff accurately and fairly and, and give the customers what, what they need. So you'll mix in a couple of tens and thirties on a day that you've got a majority of two and fives. And it's one of the things like last weekend, um, we did, we did two days in the office and it was all on backlog stuff that tens mm-hmm. and 30 days that were well past it. I mean, you look at, you look at that chart that we have set up there and I think 30 day is like it's 75 business days right now. Um, is around 15 that weeks it says yeah. 50. Okay. Yeah. So that, that that's, that's crazy. That, that it's that it's that way um, that that you cannot stay caught up with that um, with, with it, it, the 10 day, even the 10 day is something a year ago. 10 day was you're pretty much dead on 10 to 12 days is what you're expecting. And it's ballooned out there. And it's I, I, I say this, I, I don't want it to balloon any more um, than what it is, but it, it could well happen if these leagues fire up and these players start playing great and and. People are, are, are looking at LeBron James exquisite right now over a million dollars in, in uh, Golden's auction. And you're seeing Zion Williams and stuff selling at PWCC for $90,000 and there's still a week or so left. It's like, this is insane. It, mind-blowing for sure. So are you seeing – when it comes to like the 30-day and maybe even the 10-day, right? I mean, but – and especially the non-guaranteed. Are you seeing more people sending in the base cards now because they're seeing – base cards, you know, absolutely explode. Oh, what's driving all the volume there? That's what's that's what's crazy to me. It, it, I think it's, I don't really know what's driving the volume there. You, you're seeing a lot more base cards because I think more people are, are just opening product and getting it out there. Hmm. And I think as this pandemic started, you thought, okay, 30 day, that's fine. I can wait a month. It's, there's no leagues or anything starting, but as it got closer, people are jumping ahead of it. And so yeah. you're seeing more base cards. You're seeing more people use, especially the single grade service that we talked about before, mm-hmm. using that to get a little bit lower price point um, and try to get some of that stuff done quicker. Um, so it, it's 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 really tough to say what is what's point in there because it's, it's really all coming in. Yep. Interesting. Well, I can just say from um, my my small world, right? A lot of people are they're not taking for granted anymore, like having. 10 John Morant base cards or, you know, like I said, 10 Bobby Witt, just regular Chrome first cards. It's like, wait, they're $10 cards, but if you go grade it, it's a $40 card. So why not pay the 10 bucks? Right. It's like the math is starting to make sense to people. It, it, and I've, I've I've talked to some of our, our veteran guys that have been around for a while and they said, I'm so, and it it was sort of, they said it sort of in in a way that they were mad that they tried not to be this way. It was like, so many new people in this industry, in this hobby, they think it's so simple to turn a $10 card into a $50 card, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, it's like, it is. guys are just now catching on to it and they're not a chance to check it out. And so the amount of new customers that are coming into this industry, too, have sort of the, the overwhelming amount of submissions. I mean, we, we looked at our numbers the other day. We, we tried a lot of stuff. And just kind of in the past six months, there's been 3,000 new customers that have never submitted before submitting stuff to us. Holy That's a crazy cra- number. The last month? Yeah. No, last three, uh, last, last six months. Last six so months. We, we, we wow. did the last, we did the last two, two quarters. So pretty much the, to, I mean, it's going to be to the first of this year, 2000, that many new customers. And I'm going to tell you right now, most of those are going to be over this past two, two and a half months that people have just poured out when, when our when our team presented those numbers to me, said, "Do you realize that there's been over three thousand new customers, first time submitters, that have not ever submitted a card to us that have sub- are, are submitting now? That's a crazy number." <laughs> I just yeah, I, that doesn't even compute. Like, 
It, 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 it does. It. And, and it was really funny that one of our customers said, I'm so tired of watching these breaks and these new guys that I've never seen before, never heard before, that are now turning, doing this business. It's like, man, it's, it's, uh, it's getting more cutthroat now that more people realize that there is money to be made in the sports card world um, than ever before, especially when you're stuck at home, especially when you can't travel, you can't do shows, you can't go to your, your normal job. Well, you're going to have to make money somehow. And people said, you know what? I can make money opening packs of cards and doing John Morant based rookies. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Wow. Um, interesting. So I'm curious, you know, you t- take a step back from, from Beckett for a minute and just knowing that there's the, the explosion of graded cards is happening and, and you're seeing it yeah. right, obviously right on the front lines. Does that concern you for kind of the, the state of the hobby three to six months from now, when all of these cards really start to flow into the marketplace do we start yeah. to see a massive watering down of yeah. prices? It, 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 it's a thing that for, for the last couple of years we've talked about. When is this bubble going to burst? When's yeah. it, when, is, when is everything going to sort of level out? And we thought it was um, – we thought it was would have happened already. Um, when, when the pandemic started and the market dipped just a tad bit for those – a month or so, we thought, okay, is this it? Did, the, did, the, did COVID-19 force us into a flattening? Um, and I, we thought it would, but it obviously didn't. So, do I do I think it'll happen at the end of the year? To be honest, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it, if it will or not. Um, I would say, if you said you've got to say a pick right now, yeah, I think it would would probably slow everything down, water everything down. There's going to be more graded products out there than ever before. Um, and if that's the case, maybe the higher end graded stuff the our, our tens and black labels and things like that are the, the driving force. And the other things are great for um, just the, just the novice collector. I mean, we, we look at, we had uh, a friend of, of mine reached out and said, Hey, my son wants a Luca rookie for um, um, Christmas. He's like just a regular card. I don't, I don't need anything, anything expensive or anything. Say, so, okay. Um, I've got a dealer. He's got a BGS nine, $75. Perfect. I'll take it. Well, I think those things now I looked the other day are, are $150, $175. Like, th- she just wanted just a regular card for her son, and she's already now made $100 on just the basic stuff. So I think that I think the demand for the high-end stuff will still be there. I think it could slow down on the on the just the regular stuff. Just the collectors in general may not be buying as much. But if you want me to bet on it, no, I'm not going to bet on it or against it because I, I truly I don't understand this this market that we're in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I think the reality is we just talked about at the beginning, like we need stats, we need some performances to judge, judge kind of the the value of cards. But I do think, and I had this conversation with Scott from Starstock, and I think the difference these days is that we have various marketplaces now. We have infrastructure in place to actually sell cards, Yep. right? The The last, you know, junk wax era, we were just so ahead of our time we had no place to sell you had to go to card shows and card shops in the 90s you couldn't pop on ebay or com c or star stock yep now there's just so many outlets that i think it can we can help manage some of the increase in volume yep you're, you're exactly right that's and it, it's a great thing that we've we've seen those guys pop up i mean one of one of the big ones now that's that sort of crossed over stock x mm-hmm. who, who is big in the shoe market now that or is now into the sports collectibles market and there there's somebody that said hey there's here's a new you're going to bring in a new audience here that wasn't here before um and well let's let's have a platform for those guys here mm-hmm. so all the guys you mentioned it's not just ebay and amazon and comc anymore other other entities are popping up all over and guys that have um, funds to to ramp it up and, and increase their marketing and, and increase their their market share and I think that's what they're what they're doing so um, there's a you, you said it right there's a lot more areas that that people can can buy sell and and trade their cards and collectibles right now yeah yeah one of the one of the questions I do get from folks is um, how do you as you lead the team how do you help make sure you're still consistent with your grades and you're, you're not, you're not rushing your grades yep. during this crazy time of, of volume. What do you, what's the message you give to your team? I, I, it's, it's, it's so crazy that you said that cause I had a conversation with a customer the other day about that. And, uh, um, I, t- I actually talked about it on, um, on our Beckett live 
show the other day mm-hmm. is we right now, if, if we were, were silly, we would move people around that, that no cards in, in our building and operations and, and card verification and things like that and put them on the, the lower end submissions, the base cards and things like that. Go do the single grade stuff. You guys can do this. You can mow through this easy money grab for us right now. Mm-hmm. Grab it, move it on, ship it out of there. Everybody wins. But long term, it's not the play we want. Um, and it's the reason why we hold our guys accountable. We, we make sure that their their standards are the same. We don't force them. Hey, you need to get, you can normally do 400 cards a day. We really need to get you to, to 500. Just just push those things through. Because in, in this thing, uh, in this market are still the the shady, crook, crooked people that will try to deceive people. And if you get a card through, it's going to be big money. Um, and so for, for us, we, on, our, on our weekly meetings and our monthly meetings, we say, hey, stay, just stay consistent. Keep doing what you're doing. Let us, let us handle sort of the flow of stuff. Let us work on that. Don't compromise anything. Keep your integrity. Keep doing your stuff. And it's really the thing. These, these guys that have, that have been with us, the, especially the older guys that are sort of the veterans around with the new guys, they've been there 20 plus years. Um, and that they're saying, we built this, this company and there's no reason to sacrifice it right now because we have too much business in here. Just, um, this isn't something that we want to, uh, money grab right now and say, ha ha, what a great 2020. Um, but, but our cards get out in the marketplace and 2021 say, this is trash that you put out pure garbage here. We can't trust this brand anymore. And that's what we have to stick by. Mm. Well put. Yeah, you're right. I just, it makes total sense, right? It's not worth sacrificing the insane growth and the credibility no. over I, I, 10% if they, if, if, speed. No, no, if, if we wanted to, to, to get numbers here, put me in there to grade. Oh my gosh, what a disaster. <laughs> that would be truly a disaster. Seven out yeah, of 10. Yeah, it just, it, everything looks perfect to me. Perfect. This is black label. Every one of these things, let's move on. <laughs> um, but but it, it is, it's something that when when we, we, we started BGS, we, we had, a, had a policy and we followed that and we were strict at first and, and we were proud of that. And these guys have built this brand and, and a quick money grab is not something we're into. Uh, it, it's it's sort of like we tell customers, hey, we, we want this to be a long-term deal with you guys, so don't send every card you've got. Pick the best ones you have. We don't want to to, to gouge you right now just to, right. to grab a quick buck. So it's a long-term thing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how big of a player is SGC going to be? Um, I, 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 I watched an interview that, that, that one of their guys did. Mm-hmm. Um I, I was months ago and it, there are some shots thrown and, and some comments done towards both of the, the other grading services in the industry, us and, and us and PSA. So I, I'll try, I, I try to, to remain neutral on this because yep. all of the companies are, are good companies. Yep. Um, SGC is, has, has gained some, some market share here. Uh, PSA had to shut down their operations completely for a mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm. And we shut ours down for two weeks. Um, and so they were the only guys that stayed open. So these guys that, that are in the industry that had to have stuff graded, I mean, obviously, they, they have to send it to the company that's that's there. Mm-hmm. But the thing with SGC now, and I'm speaking like I, I know their business, this is just absolute feedback that I've gotten from, from people in the industry, is they're now experiencing the backlog and the, the um, hey, we can turn your cards around in 10 days. Well, it's actually 20 now. Uh, we're at 30 now. Like, it's just across the board yeah. that it's a, an influx of cards there. So um, I, I'm never afraid of competition ever at all. And, and SGC guys, and um, if they, they are in there and, and they're able to compete and things like that, you can obviously tell right now that there's plenty in the market for that. But my goal is, is obviously, as anyone running a business, you want to crush the other, other businesses. So you've got to figure out a way to um, beat those guys to, to whatever you can. So um, that's kind of, that's kind of my thoughts. No, that's on, fair. On, on this. That's fair. Yeah. I, I do think it, it was um, being open kind of open yeah. you know, being open opened others eyes to wait who's this what, yeah. what's an sgc sure. graded card sure. it, and they it, were it, they were, were, were worthless i mean i shouldn't say that they, they weren't worth nearly as much as the psa or bgs no and all of a sudden that's that's all that was popping on the market for a few weeks and it's like oh, well okay they're vintage for forever and ever got it yeah, that's what the what they sort of hung their hat on there yeah. and so but people had to had to submit cards there um but i also think that the the market if you go look at secondary market sales and things like that, they, they were, they, they, they were getting some good prices there for a while. Cause it was the only thing really on the market. Yep. But I think now 
um, things are sort of sort of leveled out the um, turnaround times and the submission levels and things like that that have kind of gotten back to normal. And you can look at secondary pro- secondary market prices on some some cards um, and say, hey, it was it, it it's it's sort of getting back to to normal. Yeah. So that'll be I guess that's the the biggest shot that I'll take at anybody um, on that. Yep. No, that's fair. I think that's. I think everyone would probably agree with you there. So I'm curious. So obviously with volume and you guys, I mean, you're just heads down trying to catch up. What do you, when you're looking out maybe six months, maybe even to next year, um, is, are there any big changes that you're excited about? Or, I mean, the slab's going to look different. Um, you're going to have a new offering, anything that you can kind of give us a sneak peek into, or are you, you're not thinking about that stuff right now? <laughs> No, I, I think I think the one thing and, and touched on it briefly before is is the shows is is kind of what our what our show scene will be like is okay. if, if the market stays like this, do we want to pull people out of the office and go or do we go and say, hey, we're just going to do submissions or yeah. take submissions there won't do on site grading. Um, the national is kind of a different thing, but we had we had big plans this year for yeah. for shows doing a, doing doing some different things that shows that we haven't done in the past kind of expanding. Mm-hmm. what we were going to be doing um, at some events that we'd never done before. So we were excited about that in new markets, in international markets, and it all kind of, kind of got shut down pretty quick in the year. So I it, it, think the thing that we, we're seeing now is um, how, do we need to do two, three shows a month? Do we, need, do we need to be out on the road? Do we need to just hunker down here and do that? So um, that, I think that's the major change that, that, I went into this year planning for a, a bigger show appearance and coming out of this and saying, man, you know what? Do we need to do as many shows or events or things like that and travel as much? People are still reaching out. Hey, come to my shop. I need you to do this. Hey, come to, are you going to do this show or this? That's like right now we just don't need to. Um, that that's, that's the main thing kind of in the next six months um, for this year. And then looking into 2021 to see kind of how the, the, the outside world is, um, reacting to everything that's going on. I mean, in, in November, you're going to have an election and then is, is COVID gone? It's like, you, you don't know what in the world is going to happen in, in the end of this year. Um, whether the national in, in December, is, is that going to, is that going to take place? What's going to go on there? So shows the main thing. There's no real changes in our, in our slab or our procedures or anything. Um, I, 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 I jokingly, not jokingly say, tell everybody in the office, let's double our staff here. I would love to double our staff in the office, and I think that that would be something that would change it. And saying doubling um, is crazy because it's hard to find good people or one or two guys um, every once in a while that come in and help us. But that, that realistically right now is something that I could see us ramping up our our um, staff even more. And we're all, always looking, but at this point it's like, okay, we we need all areas, logistics, operations, obviously graders. Um, so ramping our staff up to uh, even more next year. Right. I feel like every time you're on, we have this moment where I need to stop and say, if you're listening and you're in the yes, Dallas area, yes. go stink and apply, go yeah. get a job. And, 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 Beckett. And, and tell, I'll be honest, it doesn't even have to be Dallas area. We had, we had a guy flying uh, last week from Florida for an interview. Guy did great on his test. Great interview came in here and it's not just Dallas. If you're willing to, um, Obviously, you're going to have to work out of the Dallas office, re- relocate and work there. And you, if you know the industry and you are are good about it and passionate about it and you, and you think you can do it, please apply. Mm. And don't think that out there, and I may have said it here before, oh, you don't pay your guys enough. That's not the case. Like <laughs> you will be paid enough that you will be good. Like there's enough business. The the market is strong. So don't think that you can come in and say, oh, you're, you're getting paid six bucks an hour for a grader. No, we're not. It's not that if, if our graders are listening, like, oh, we'll take more money. Obviously, everybody wants that. But you're you. Um, this is a career you can you can make a a really good living um, on this side of the table. And I say this side of the table and not on the dealer side of the table. Um, but but please, if you're interested if in operations, if you know cards, you don't want to grade, but you can identify cards. We need you. If you want to come in and open packages and process orders, we need you. If you want to come in and help slab cards in production, we need you. And obviously, if you can grade cards, oh, yeah, we need you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're, we just, just uh, uh, P- PSA does a good job. They send out emails and, oh, yes, we're hiring, we're hiring. And we, we do the same thing kind of in a, in a different form. 
So yes, we are hiring. So if, if anyone is listening here and you are, and, and, and you are interested, please um, reach out to us. Get, get us your information because we are hiring in, in all aspects of the, the business. And make sure you mention you came from Breaker Culture for an extra yes. week of PTO. Yeah, and, uh, yes, Wait, an extra week that... of PTO. If you, if you make, <laughs> my gosh, that's great. I'll just put, I'll just add that to, to your your bill. I'll just that's put right. that on there your, you on your bill. Like, Done deal. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. So let, let's do a little bit of rapid fire real quick. I know how much you love this stuff. <laughs> love it. I've been I've been anxious for it for since we talked in October. <laughs> Every day you wake up thinking about this. Yeah, I was saying, what is he going to ask me? <laughs> Um, all right. So what's your favorite July 4th fireworks show? I'm assuming it's in Texas. It is. Uh, I will say uh, Possum Kingdom Lake. It's a lake west of Fort Worth. Fantastic. I've grown up going there and they put on the best fireworks show. I don't know if it's happening this year, but it's it's normally the best. Possum Kingdom. Is that like Texas's version of Magic Kingdom? It is not. It, it, so I think some people may think that there's a, a pretty good party cove there that, that it could turn into that. But it's a, it's a great place. Nice. Okay. What's the most you've ever spent on fireworks? I am not a big spender of fireworks. It drives me crazy to fire off um, $25 in one shot. So uh, I usually go to watch them with the kids, if anything. But this year, um, I bought, I guess, $100 worth of fireworks. And they got a pretty good show. We launched off some last night. So I guess 100 It's not very impressive. Nice. Do you have, is there rules and kind of regulations for you guys shooting fireworks? Or can you do whatever you want? Yeah, you can't. You cannot uh, fire off in the city limits. Okay. And this this Fourth of July, we're at my sister's house um, down in South Texas, and they're kind of out in the country, so we fire off uh, fireworks down here. So legally, but probably not hundred percent legal. I'll say, cringing. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So you have to pick one of the rookies in basketball, football, or baseball this year. You can pick their top card, BGS ten to own 10 years from now current prices which one do you buy wow 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 so from zion um, to jaw to Jordan to whoever you want you got um part. wow i'm gonna tell you i i, I love cd lamb i love uh, I, and Ooh. it's not because he's a he's a cowboy now um but watching him at OU, I think the guy's an absolute stud. I think the, the Cowboys got a steal there. I was stunned that he fell to them that far. They oh, didn't too. want him. Um, so I think that's going to be a good one. It's a receiver. Um, but watching Joe Burrow last year in, in college, how could you not want his stuff, I yep. guess? Yep. Um, but I also love I love John Morant. Um, he went to Murray State. What a great name of a college and a last name to have. So <laughs> um, I love his game. So um, – I would say probably one of those three that I okay. can't pick one that I would say specifically right now, since Luca's not a, a rookie this year, yep. I can't pick him. So I'll go with one of those three. I love the CD lamb one. That's great. That's a great, yeah. great play. All right. What, uh, what new routine have you developed during this COVID-19 pandemic that you'll think you think will probably stick with you for a while? I thought it would be kind of waking up slower, getting the kids ready. Um, I was working from home and was sort of undisciplined. That was the hard part there. Um, what I would like to do is do that is sort of take things a little bit more to easier in the mornings, mm -hmm. um, and sort of help the kids and my wife get up and get rolling again. Um, that's the one thing that I would like to take from it. If I can do, it, it's going to be the harder part. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, all right. Last one for you. What's uh, what's your favorite current app on your phone? And don't say TikTok. Um, we, we talk, and I'm not, I'm not saying TikTok. I will tell you right now what I go to a lot. And I'm not saying Facebook because I got ripped early for that early, first interview, rookie move. Um, I, I do use, um, uh, I do go to Twitter a lot just to keep up with everything. And I've, I've done a lot more recently of not looking at the reality nonsense type stuff, but keeping more in the loop with the card market and see what's going on there. So right now I think it's Twitter to keep me kind of up on everything. Okay. Nice. I, I asked that because I've, I've, I've asked the question to a few people and some ones have popped up that they're using now, like to doist, like these to do apps and stuff to help manage their time. Huh. And I'm like, Oh, this is, this is actually really helpful to know. Yeah, that, that is good. I, before, I mean, I was using Waze constantly when you're traveling and doing stuff and now you're not doing that. So Waze is out. So <laughs> I haven't heard of the to do list. Maybe I, there you go. 
There you go. Well, Jeremy, you are always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much for giving us some time on the holiday weekend. Look forward to getting this out to folks and enjoy your family, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Always good to talk to you, Jeremy. Beautiful. All right, you cut out there, but I'm sure you said lots of great things about us. <laughs> hey, I tell her I'm here now. So, yeah, I appreciate letting me jump on here. I always enjoy it. The uh, the time flew by, so looking forward to our, our next next conversation. Awesome. Sounds good. Have a great weekend. Right. See you, Thanks, man. You too. Bye. Bye.